So the next presentation is uh, from Aneo, Aneo Industry, uh, from Christian Schleminger and uh, Michael Bantle. So Christian Schleminger is the COO of Aneo, uh, a Norwegian company delivering complete solutions with industrial heat pumps and waste heat recovery. So Christian is a mechanical engineer from the TU Dresden in Germany. He has a PhD from the Norwegian University of Science and Te Technology, NTNU. And he, uh, so he's working with uh, thermal energy engineering and hydrogen storage. So before uh, Aneo, Christian was eight years uh, researcher at Sintef which is uh, very well known in Europe uh, as a research institute organization in Trondheim. Um, so he's a, a researcher and well known in steam generating heat pumps, has published more than 80 publications and 25 journal articles. So thank you uh, to have Christian here. Then uh, Michael, Michael is the CTO of Aneo um, and he is responsible for integration and operation of the steam producing heat pumps for clients in different industries like in the food industry, feed, chemical, pulp and paper. And since more than a decade, he has been working in the field of steam compression and high temperature heat pumps. So we are very happy that you are both here and present uh, your newest uh, development, a 1.6 megawatt steam supply heat pump. So please, Christian or Michael, take over the control and uh, start your presentation. Thank you very much, Colin. Thank you for having us. Um, we will talk today, or I mainly will talk today about the integration of a 1.6 uh, megawatt steam supplying heat pump into a feed production process um, here in Trondheim. Here in the background, you, you see the team of us, um, Aneo Industry. Just as a short wrap up, um, Aneo Industry is 100% daughter of the Aneo concern, which is, which is a, um, a company which is actually um, having various uh, fields of operation. So we have uh, um, mainly renewable production, electricity production on the on the upstream sector, which is uh, windmills, uh, solar power, water power. We have uh, battery systems uh, for grid uh, balancing, but also um, um, biofuel activities. Um, in addition to that, um, we have a, um, a central, which is basically managing the operation of these um, um, upstream uh, technologies. So we are managing about six, six and a half terawatt hours of uh, terawatt hours of electricity production um, here in Norway, which is about six percent of the total. And then we have on the on the downstream part, as we call it, um, we have uh, five different um, different uh, companies which are focusing on mo mobility on. Uh, buildings, um, on uh, supermarket um, energy systems, on uh, that what we call real estate, which is mainly focused on um, supplying um, energy as a service in terms of um, solar technology. And us at uh, Aneo Industry, we are mainly focusing on uh, high temperature heat pumps, steam producing heat pumps. And um, I will take you through the um, technology we have and uh, one of our first projects we are working on. We as a new industry, um, we try to help our customers, of course, to achieve their energy saving goal targets, um, which are mainly on, of course, energy savings in the in the in the process industry so to say in the industry so with our heat pump um, technology we are aiming between 60 to 80 percent in uh, in in uh, energy efficiency measures depending on the um on the emissions either local or globally we are achieving up to 100 percent uh, emission reductions um and as you may know in norway um a lot of um industrial processes are already electrified. So we talk in, in some sectors already up to 80% uh, electrification by means of, for example, direct electric um, steam boilers. So by implementing um, a high temperature heat pump or a heat pump, which is producing the steam 
um, we can, so to say, release grid capacity. It is also in Norway, of course, a discussion. I mean, more and more um, industries are trying to get electrified. We have a lot of initiatives are aiming for either hydrogen production, green hydrogen production, or we have big data centers, for example, um, trying to establish themselves in Norway because there is electricity available. It is green electricity. So there is actually a race about grid capacity. And um, when we think about a one, two, three, four, five megawatt uh, uh, system, we can help, so to say, to unleash um, grid capacity for other customers and then uh, uh, further increasing the the electrification of the of the industrial sector. And last but not least, um, you have heard it, Cordin introduced myself as uh, that I was working um, a couple of years at Sintef and uh, from this, so to say, I take that with me that uh, we mainly work with natural refrigerants because we believe this is uh, the future proof technology. So if you invest in a heat pump which has a lifetime of 15, 20, 25 years or longer, you want to have an investment which you're sure that you can actually operate it uh, over the entire lifetime without any restrictions. So the case I, I um, I introduce to you today and um, give you some some experience on how we did it. It's basically uh, located in Trondheim, so close to our to our office, our main office. Um, on the fjord line of uh, of Trondheim, on the harbor side, uh, we have a big um, a big producer of uh, feed of animal feed. Uh, it's actually the largest Norwegian producer of animal feed. You see the numbers here: about four thousand two hundred employees. Um, they have seven uh, feed factories um, distributed over entire Norway. Um, and um, the philosophy of this company is basically that they produce animal feed uh, in a way that they invest a lot in thermal treating of the or in uh, hygienization of the product uh, in terms of uh, instead of putting um, chemicals like antibiotics uh, in it. So um, the people working there, they assure me every day that uh, they can eat their products and we have tried it. We have tried it with the, with the um, environmental minister. We were eating these pellets, so there's nothing, uh, nothing to fear about. So we are really happy to be one part of the long-term strategy of this company in order to develop a, a more sustainable process. If we look on the site in Trondheim, um, we are able to install a heat pump there, which can uh, reduce the grid capacity. Again, this this um, uh, site is uh, today supplied with a direct electric uh, boiler, uh, steam boiler. Um, so by utilizing 1.2 megawatt in uh, in excess heat from the from the process, we can uh, reduce the grid capacity of the plant uh, with the same amount. Um, we have uh, zero emissions on the on the production side because there is no there is no um, um, no off gas from from any um, any boiler. Um, we aim for about the savings of uh, seven point five uh, or we uh, steam production over years about uh, seven point five gigawatt hours, and um, we will we are aiming for five gigawatt hours in electric energy reduction for the site. Um, of course, one important part is, and I know we'll go further into the details on it, is basically how do we identify the best practice of uh, integrating a high temperature heat pump um, in the process. Um, and another additional point is basically um, that with the heat pump, which is utilizing the waste heat out of uh, um, out of the process, we can reduce the odor. Um, so the smell out of the the air vent, so to say, of the factory. Uh, you may have seen it. Uh, this picture shows really simple the way it is. At today's factory, we can utilize the waste heat here down to 30, 25 to 30 degrees C. We have a heat pump system, which is basically divided into four four parts. Um, if needed, we need to have a pre-handling of the of the waste heat stream. Uh, then we have a, a heat exchanger which actually captures the heat to make it really, really simple pictures. Then we have a bottoming cycle uh, which upgrades this heat. Um, let's say, for example, from 30 degrees to about 
80 to 90 degrees C, where we produce steam, low pressure steam or vacuum uh, steam, which is then further compressed with uh, a number of uh, steam vents in order to reach the target temperature, which could be everything from um, 100 to 150 degrees C, and then uh, supplying this back to the to the industrial process. Um, this is basically how the pellet feed process looks like, really simplified. So the raw product is used, the pellets are made, um, the raw product is mixed, um, basically powder um, and grains are mixed. Um, they add about uh, two bar ambient pressure steam into the into a mixing chamber um, and then pressing these pellets. So the steam is actually used to give moisture to the to the raw material in order to form the pellets to make them stable and also as I have been into in the beginning basically um, increasing the pellet temperature over a temperature that you actually um, killing all the um, bacteria, uh, for example like salmonella in this uh, uh, in this case in order to have a to have a pellet a feed for the animals which is which is safe uh, to be used. So the pellets are shaped and then the system, so to say, um, cools down the pellets uh, to a temperature which is then in, um, about 20 degrees C, which can be where the pellets can be um, packed and uh, going through the further logistic chain. So what happens, these pellets are cooled with a relative large um, airstream which actually today leaves the factory at about 60, 65 degrees C with a relative humidity of uh, 30 point or 35 percent. What we can do, we can utilize this waste heat and cool it, for example, down to 30 degrees C and condensing also out the moisture or most of the moisture in this, uh, in this stream. So we get, for example, here a water uh, system um, taking this heat out of the airstream and delivering it to the heat pump. The heat pump has got the name, it's called Frick. Uh, so if you, if you hear this name in terms of heat pumps, then you know you need to call in Norway. Um, what is the heat pump doing? Again, it closes the loop, it produces steam, which is then feed back to the process. Um, but we are also producing um, hot water uh, up to 85 degrees C, basically to help um, the existing steam boiler preheating the water because the steam boiler or the heat pump which we install is, uh, is just for two production lines out of uh, five. So there are still uh, other production lines which are relying on the, on the steam boiler today. And, um, and there we can utilize the heat to preheat the, the makeup water or the feed water of that one. So at the end of the day, the most important points you need to take with you is that the thermal integration of such a system needs to be as close as possible to the core process because this enables uh, lower temperature lifts, which at the end of the day is a higher COP, as you know. And also if you have multiple production lines, which you can, um, so to say, uh, utilize then you have a high operation hours over the year, which again uh, gives you a faster payback time on your system. Um, what do we see here? Well, you know, um, COP, a coefficient of performance, will decrease with the temperature lift. And uh, you have seen the numbers. So we are talking about the temperature lift of around uh, 90 Kelvin, 85 to 95 Kelvin. So you see um, the COP is not... Uh, is not as high as five, but with a typical six, 40 to 60 percent canoe, we are aiming for something which is about three. On the right side, you see the operation envelope of the steam producing heat pump uh, of ours. Um, so we can utilize waste heat starting at 20 to 30 degrees C, supplying, for example, at 30 degrees C uh, with 30 degrees C waste heat um, steam of a uh, temperature of about 130 degrees C saturation, so it means close to three bar steam. Um, this is how it looks like. Here you see um, basically the main part of the bottoming cycle, which is the ammonia heat pump. On the right side you see the, you see the pillar vents. Um, the heat pump is aiming to produce two tons of steam and uh, providing, so to say, um, 1.4 to 1.8 megawatt uh, thermal, um, and 
in the setup as it is built today, um, we are aiming to uh, reduce the energy efficiency for the for the provided heat down uh, with about uh, sixty seven percent. This is how it look. This is how it looks like on a really simplified uh, PNED. Um, you see here basically on the left hand side we have the uh, the heat source from the air in a, in a water cycle we have an evaporator which evaporates ammonia in a low pressure receiver we have an ammonia screw compressor which then produces um, or supplies a medium pressure vessel um, um, of ammonia the medium separator from this one we go in a second stage with a piston compressor um, and then we the condenser the condenser of this uh, of this piston compressor is basically producing low pressure steam. This low pressure steam goes into a flash tank, and from this flash tank we have four stages of uh, of uh, vapor vents, which are then compressing uh, the low pressure steam up to, for example, uh, two bar absolute of steam, and the uh, dimensioning conditions are about two tons per hour. Um, what do we do elsewhere? You see the red lines down here. So we are utilizing the 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 oil coolers actively in the in the heat source. And um, what you also see, as I've been into, it is a two-stage ammonia system, which actually is a quite good thing because then we are rather flexible on the on the heat source side. So we can you see here the maximum and minimum temperatures, but we can also take heat out of the heat source on a much lower temperature level than that. These are the compressors you see, screw compressor, piston compressor, and uh, the vapor vents on top. Don't need to waste that much time on these details, but the question is, does it work? So this is the exhaust of the of the factory, of the cooling air, so to say. You see here the about one ton of uh, moisture per hour condensing in the, in the, um, in the air outside. When we turn on the heat pump and just uh, vent the air, uh, vent the steam we are producing over the roof, you see um, a nice uh, steam uh, condensation here. And then, of course, pictures are something, but they're having a video, something else. And here you see one hour of steam basically venting directly over the roof of the, of the factory. This we did in order to to uh, yeah, do a little test to tuning of the system before we actually um, supply the steam to the to the um, to the factory. What is about efficiency? Um, here you see the same picture as before, just with some numbers, so real operation numbers. Um, we have a water source of about twenty nine degrees C or heat source, um, which supplies in a temperature difference of five. Um, Kelvin, about 600 kilowatt to the evaporator of the ammonia system. All the compressors together, the ammonia compressors and the steam compressors are utilize or are consuming about 285 uh, kilowatt. And then we are supplying, I'm sorry that the H is missing, but then we are supply, supplying about one ton of uh, steam out of the vapor vents um at 1.5 bar absolute and uh, 5 kelvin overheating and all in all um, it is about 642 kilowatt um at the same time of course we are heating our feed water uh, and the balance of plant component are, is, are consuming about um 20 kilowatt if we do the math uh, cop uh, just on the shaft um, without the balance of plants and only for the steam production, it is uh, 2.1. Um, including the water preheating, it is uh, it is 2.6. And then, of course, if we go to the total COP, so taking into account also the balance of plant components, uh, we are down to 2.4. Uh, um, you see here, it is about uh, one ton of steam production. Um, we are aiming for two ton of steam production. Um, and uh, we expect much better values because the the, the steam vents will will operate much better in, uh, in higher capacities, and um, we expect actually to to reach the design conditions, which is at the end of the day a total COP of about three point one. Um, if we look at the total cost of cost of ownership. Um, um, yeah. 
ATH was already touching that point uh, really extensively. Let's focus uh, on the heat pumps on the left and all the other uh, reference technologies you can see uh, basically here on the right side. Of course, it all depends on the country, on the electricity price and the price of the of the other technologies. However, but what we see, if you have uh, depreciated um, the investment of the heat pump over, for example, the first 10 years, you see that the uh, that the production cost of the of the thermal energy of the heat pump uh, is very much competitive against to the other uh, technologies. At the end of the day, we can sum up this case um, here at uh, what we do do at uh, at Fellowship in Skansen in Trondheim. Lessons learned so far. Um, there's a lot of excess heat uh, which we can recover, and the temperature of this excess heat in most of the cases is very much below. 45 degrees C. Uh, it is quite often moist air, which is not utilized today, and especially in food and feed and chemical and pulp and paper sector, this is a really valuable um, source for the heat pumps, and with our technology we can do that. Traditional systems are made for steam supply up to, uh, or utilizing steam, which is supplied at maybe 8 to 10 bar, but then used in the process about 2 to 5 bar. However, quite much of the products which are which are produced are actually degrading at temperatures above 100 degrees C. And uh, so what we need to ask us, do we really need to supply 8 or 10 bar or can we just can we live with with much lower pressures supplied to the process and also the process itself? Could it run with lower pressures? However, still what we see then is that we need um, heat pumps which have uh, a temperature lift at about 100 Kelvin. And uh, in order to do this efficiently, at this high temperature lift, uh, we are ending up with multi-stage compression and also cascade systems, as you, as you have seen, in order to have these competitive COPs. Natural refrigerants are more and more uh, preferred by the customer and the customer we had, which we have here, and Thales Shepard is, is uh, requiring uh, natural refrigerants. We still see that, uh, for example, the mechanical vapor compression systems, um, it is reliable, um, it is cost competitive, but it is large, of course, due to the point that we use low pressure vapor or so. However, there is still uh, a lot of um, research, uh, for example, ongoing in order to make these systems uh, much more compact and also maybe a bit more efficient. On the integration of the heat pump, the critical part is basically we need to go as close as possible to the processes in terms of temperature, right? As as higher the temperature we can have as a heat source, as better the COP, as lower the temperature we need to supply to the process, as better the COP. So in the factory in Trondheim, we actually build a complete own uh, low pressure um, um, steam supply system in order to to feed the process uh, very much with the steam conditions it actually needs and with not much more higher pressure because this would just uh, reduce the COP. And uh, we can also say that the chief performance uh, is in line with the with the predictions, with the dimensions. And all these points are, well, success criteria, which basically made that um, last week um, the team here, um, this is the CTO of Feles Schöpper and uh, the leader of the Norwegian Heat Pump Association. And uh, this is my colleague, um, hanne louise Moore, which is the project leader of it, and me. So we got uh, the prize for the best um, heat pump or the best industrial heat pump uh, in Norway, 2024. And um, so Feles Schöpper got the prize with Aneo as, uh, as a supplier and uh, the, basically, the the main argument for this is that uh, that Feller um is asking to get these products and is, has also the will and uh, the long term strategy in order to use um, high temperature heat pumps and heat pumps um, in their process. So this was basically um, the reason behind. And then with the technology, uh, what we developed and supplied to to Feller Shepper. Um, the, the consortium, which is actually looking for the winners, found that this is a, a really good package. So with this said, thank you very much. Um, we need to thank all the partners involved and also the founding body of uh, 
the Norwegian government, uh, which uh, supported uh, um, this project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Christian, for this very nice in, uh, presentation. Um, congratulations for the prize winning and also, I mean, you make it really happy.